Welcome to Judo for the World, which comes to you from the French capital, Paris. Once again, this city plays host to one of the most exhilarating events on the World Judo Tour, the Paris Grand Slam. This year, the grass slopes of the legendary Accor Hotels Arena are covered in snow as Paris shivers from a cold snap. But inside, the temperature was just as hot as usual, with thousands of fans filling the stadium to the rafters in anticipation of top-class judo. We'll witness the emergence of some phenomenal young talent as they step up to the mark under the spotlights. We'll bring you a special feature exploring France's love affair with the sport of judo, before returning to see if their current national heroes could raise the roof inside this iconic judo cauldron. We start at under 48 kilograms, where Daria Bilidid of the Ukraine is taking the World Judo Tour by storm. At just 17 years of age, the sensational teenager is already European champion and now has two Grand Prix titles to her name. Here in Paris, she was looking for her first Grand Slam and flattened the world champion Tanaki Funa in the semi-final. Could Korea's Kang Yu Jong stop her in the final? Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Billadin going forwards. Only knows how to attack. Now then, Sienagi. Oh, Kang's quarter. Well, she shouldn't have climbed on her back there. That was a mistake from Billadid. The youngster just made a mistake, was looking for the Juji, and the Korean continued, took her onto her shoulder. Well, was it? A score. Well, she gets a score for it. And now Billadid will have to come from behind. This young lady, though, has the ability. Absolute brilliance in the previous round. Billa did attacks. Now then, is she going to go for the Sangaku? She doesn't want to stay there, Kang. That is not the place to be. And she's going to turn that. She ties up the legs and she turns it into the Sangaku Tatami. And that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. She knew exactly what she wanted and the Korean well, she shouldn't have stayed there, and she paid the price. She really did. This young lady here is set for great things. I think a future Olympic champion, and she's going to get her medal from the president of the IJF, Mr. Marius Visa. First Grand Slam win for this young lady, and she's just 17 years of age. At under 81 kilograms, Japan were also showing off their youth as Fujiwara Sotaro made it through to his first World Judo Tour final after this Tayatoshi Ippon against Canada's Antoine Valois-Fortier. There he would face the dynamic Korean Lee Seung Soo, who had been on fire all day, throwing with a mix of devastating techniques. After taking out Alpha Umar Jalo of France, he then breezed past the tough Bulgarian fighter, Ivalio Ivanov. And after another Ippon win against Musil of the Czech Republic, the showdown between Lee and Fujiwara was set. Which of these big throwers would come out on top? Well, they both know they've got to attack. Now, two Shidos each. Who's it going to be? Really defensive, Lee is defensive now. Fujiwara sets him up, oh, and he catches him with an Uchimata. And that was brilliant. Right on the edge there. And you can see how defensive Lee is. Fujiwara sets up the right way in and he goes right the way up the middle there. Beautifully taken Uchimata. Leads with the Ouchi, then he hops the support leg central and that's what he needed to do there. Look at the control, look at the Kazushi on the hand, and it was a well-executed Uchimata and his first ever Grand Slam gold. The under 90 kilograms saw Japan pin their hopes on the young shoulders of Mukai Shoichiro, who faced the tough task of thwarting the incredible Georgian Becca Gviniashvili in the final. At the end of last year, Gviniashvili came back into form with an emphatic win at the World Masters in St. Petersburg. To beat Gviniashvili, 
Mukai would need nerves of steel. Giving Yashvili definitely the favourite for me. On great form at the moment. World Masters champion. I think everybody there was there. And now what's going to happen here? Mukai just celebrated his 22nd birthday just yesterday. Oh, drops in Aggie! Oh my goodness me! It's all over! Mukai has just come in for a sea and Aggie. He cannot believe it because he was expecting a war here, especially with Gviniashvili. And he just caught him cold. Gviniashvili injured himself, I think, a little bit on the way over. But it was a beautiful technique by this 22-year-old. And that was amazing. First ever major tournament. And look at this. He's helping Gviniashvili off the mat. He celebrates his birthday. He celebrates his first ever Grand Slam win. And then he helps his opponent off the mat. And that is our sport. Absolute brilliance from this young man. And we're going to see a lot more of him. That's for sure. That smile says it all. The Sianagi, well, he just created the opening. He drops between Gaviniashvili's legs there and he drives. And the Kazushi and the Suruti, the hands working together, make sure that it's an absolute Ippon winning technique. Gaviniashvili gets caught cold. Look at the surprise on his face. And then look at that. What sportsmanship. And the great David Duye, double Olympic champion, four times world champion, presents him with his gold medal. And that smile says it all. And there would be a Frenchman sharing the podium with Mukai after Axel Clerget produced the goods in his bronze medal match with Mukai's compatriot, Nagasawa Kenta, catching him for an impressive submission victory. Few sporting moments can compare with the spine-tingling atmosphere after a French victory inside this arena. Clerget, the man of the hour, as he realized every French judoka's dream by standing victorious in front of an adoring French crowd. At over 100 kilograms, Japan's men had another chance for gold as Kagiura Kokuro took on Kim Sung Min of Korea. But as an uneventful contest went into golden score, it seemed as though it would be an anti-climax. Well, it's been a long haul, hasn't it? And these two, well, they need to attack. They're gonna have to do something because really, oh, no, oh my goodness me! Kagura changes direction and, well, He'd been doing the C and Aggie all the way through, but uh, being taken back as well. But he just changes direction here. And Kim of Korea goes flat on his back. So what a way to end, because that really was a great change of direction. I wish it had happened earlier, but it was well worth waiting for. He plugged away with the Sianagi all the time. And this time, he gets the arms working for the Sianagi, but changes the direction. And Suzuki says, that's what I've been waiting for. Japan were hopeful of gold in the female division of under 70 kilograms, as world champion and world number one, Arai Chizuru, came up against Olympic bronze medalist Sally Conway of Great Britain in the final. Could the Brit cause an upset? into the last minute then, and now they're gonna have to attack, and it's Arai. Arai trying to set up with the Uchimata. Arai goes in. That was close. Oh, my goodness me, has she made a mistake? She's in the hold down here. Sally Conway turns up, and they started inside the area, and it's allowed to carry on outside. Look at the Uchimata starting, and she tries to drive her over here, but Sally Conway turns her, and she turns her into the hold down. She gets the hip on and the gold medal. And Kate Howie, the last British woman to win back in 97, celebrates with her. And that was magnificent stuff from Sally Conway. In at number three on our list of the top hip ons from Paris is Canada's Artur Mogeladon, who took out Sweden's Tommy Macias with this incredible shoulder throw. 
under 100 kilogram competitor Mikita Zvirid of Belarus produced our number two epon against Cedric Olivar of France. It's the under 66 kilogram bronze medal contest that produced our top epon, Japan's Isoda Norahito against Hud Zuadani of Algeria. Isoda, left handed. As good as she was her as well as Izuchi Mata. Oh, look at that! Oh, well, a Kuriashi Harai, and that was so sweet. Caught the front foot there, but had great body projection as well, and good hands. Look at the hands working. In fact, everything's working together there, and well, Zodani just lands flat on his back. The under 52 kilogram division saw another outing for Abe Uta, Japan's 17 year old starlet. The sister of under 66 kilogram world champion Abe Hifumi hardly broke sweat as she made it through to the final. With big Ippon wins against Valentim of Brazil and Romania's Yanita. There, she faced Amandine Bouchard of France in a match which lacked the promised fireworks. Abe victorious after a third penalty to Bouchard, yet more gold for this incredible young judoka. Her compatriot Yoshida Tsukasa was looking good at under 57 kilograms after setting up a final against Canada's Krista Deguchi, who had seen off home favorite Ellen Resovo at the semi-final stage. Deguchi would cause another upset in the final, taking a Wazari lead with this cunning Uchimata sidestep. After Yoshida pulled a Wazari back, Deguchi came forward again, driving through to notch up a second Wazari and win the bout by Awazeti Ippon, the term for when two Wazari scores accumulate to end a contest. There was gold for the home fans to cheer at under 78 kilograms after Audrey Chameo defeated Hushi Steenhouse in the final. Awarding her with the gold medal was Ruslan Uspayev, chairman of the board of SMP Group. Over 78 kilogram gold went to Korea after Kim Min Jong defeated Wang Yan of China in the final. At under 60 kilograms, Japan's Shishimi Toru faced Uzbekistan's Sharafuddin Lutfilayev. Whilst the Uzbek had been the more exciting during the day, it was nevertheless Shishimi who left Paris with the gold. This was Ari's score, the best moment of the final. There was better action in one of the bronze medal matches as Great Britain's Ashley McKenzie threw Brazil's Felipe Pilim for Ippon to take the medal. His reaction showed how precious a result here in Paris is to an athlete. At under 66 kilograms, Korea's Ann Ball and Japan's Maruyama Joshiro contested the final. Though 2015 world champion Ann was the favorite, Maruyama had showcased some brilliant judo on his path to the gold medal match. His Uchimata in particular, worthy of note. But Anne is a tough competitor and had enough nows to overcome Mariama in the final through superior tactics, taking the win on penalty points. Israel's Minister of Culture and Sport, Mrs. Miri Regev, was on hand to award the under 73 kilogram gold medal to Kosovo's Akil Jakova. After some great judo in his preliminary bouts, he defeated Georgia's 2012 Olympic champion, Lasha Shavdatuashvili in the final throwing for a Wazari and holding on to become Kosovo's first male World Judo Tour gold medalist. Michael Corral of the Netherlands strengthened his position as world number one by taking under 100 kilogram gold. Whilst in the bronze medal match, there was a reminder of what judo means to the French. Cyril Marais winning bronze to prompt scenes of pure jubilation inside the Accor Hotels arena. Judo is truly special to the people of France, and it's this love affair which we now explore. La France se caractérise par une grande diversité au niveau social, au niveau culturel. Mais ce qui va peut-être pouvoir réunifier tout cet univers, c'est des valeurs que transmet le judo. La France, ce qui la caractérise euh, au niveau du judo, c'est sa jeunesse. Et s'il y a autant d'enfants qui pratiquent le judo, c'est tout simplement parce que les parents, eux, reconnaissent les valeurs éducatives du judo et se reconnaissent dans ces valeurs.
le, le JKC de Jean qui avait été créé par mon papa. Dès que j'ai eu mon diplôme d'État, j'ai commencé les cours. On a commencé, on était euh, 3-4. Depuis 44 ans, ça a évolué et aujourd'hui nous sommes environ 500 licenciés. J'ai beaucoup de parents qui s'inscrivent au judo pour pratiquer à tous âges. Donc ils viennent aussi pour le plaisir, mais pour euh, acquérir des qualités techniques et puis surtout des qualités morales. Alain, c'était mon professeur quand j'étais enfant. C'est le professeur de ma fille aujourd'hui. C'est redevenu mon professeur après 30 ans d'arrêt. Ce qui est génial avec le judo, c'est qu'on peut le faire à tout âge. Quand je suis sur le tatami avec Victoire, c'est magique parce qu'on partage la même activité, on partage la même passion du sport. C'est ce qui nous rassemble. Victoire, son rêve, c'est d'être un jour championne olympique et, et c'est possible. Quand on regarde les jeunes qui sont à l'écoute, qui, qui sont les yeux pleins d'étoiles, ça c'est la plus belle des médailles, j'ai envie de dire. Les valeurs que j'ai prises sur le tatami et que j'utilise tous les jours, je crois que c'est le contrôle de soi, le courage, la modestie et le dépassement de soi aussi. Le judo, c'est un sport avec euh, un code moral et surtout, euh, ça va beaucoup t'aider dans la vie. Premier contact avec euh, Strasbourg, à l'occasion d'une compétition internationale, j'ai été émerveillé par cette ville, sa lumière, ses couleurs, son aspect architectural euh, très caractéristique qu'on retrouve nulle part ailleurs. Mes débuts au judo, 4 ans et demi, j'ai suivi euh, papa qui, <rire> qui était prof de judo, euh, ça m'a plu, et du coup euh, je suis resté dans cette voie là, du judo. J'y suis toujours, 52 ans plus tard. L'envie de transmettre, je crois que quelque part, on l'a en soi. Je suis un enseignant d'abord et avant tout, parfois un, un entraîneur. Et ce qui m'intéresse, c'est les notions de respect, d'écoute, d'entraide, de camaraderie. Et ça, c'est des valeurs qui ont tendance des fois à, à être oubliées et euh, sur lequel il y a besoin de revenir dans le cadre du cours de judo. Ici au Rénus, beaucoup de monde, essentiellement des enfants, sont venus pour vous. voir les, les champions, boire la parole des champions et essayer d'imiter les champions. En faisant du judo, on n'apprend pas que des techniques, on apprend le respect, le salut. Bruno m'a dit que je pouvais rencontrer l'équipe de France. J'aimerais bien faire un combat avec Émilie. Un mercredi équipe de France, voilà, c'est un regroupement de tous les licenciés français. Bella est aujourd'hui à Strasbourg et sur cette journée, on fait une journée de partage, d'échange. On s'amuse bien. C'est une journée fantastique parce que je peux rencontrer plein de jeunes. Ça m'a rappelé moi quand justement j'étais petite et que j'ai vu aussi d'autres champions venir. Et je trouve ça important de retransmettre ce qu'on m'a appris, euh, le dépassement de soi, euh, toujours aller chercher plus loin, euh, même si euh, voilà, on doute, mais c'est pas grave, on y va. Et c'est toutes ces valeurs où c'est important d'inculquer parce que ça peut servir dans la vie de tous les jours et donc je trouve ça important. Le 
Le jeu de français reflète exactement la société dans laquelle on vit en France. On a une multitude de personnes qui viennent de différents endroits dans le monde. Et je crois que notre judo aussi, c'est exactement ça. Le judo, physiquement, ça a développé leur corps très bien, mais surtout, le judo leur a servi dans la vie de tous les jours. Our final category, the under 63 kilograms, saw France's biggest superstar of the event in action. World champion Clarissa Begnanou has made it back to the top of the bracket and was here looking for her first home goal in two years. She is a devastating thrower, as her opponents found out in Paris. Shi Kuijan of China was the first to feel her power. Before a semi-final against Germany's Martina Tridos, saw Begnanou once again throwing big. This time with a lethal Oso Togari. In the final, she would face Japan's Toshira Miku, who had beaten her nemesis Tina Turstenyak in the other semi final, catching Slovenia's Olympic champion with a foot sweep. Though the World Masters in December saw Toshiro record her first win over Agbegnanu, there was no doubting the favourite. And as Agbegnanu came into the venue to contest the final, the Accor Hotel's arena anticipated fireworks. One minute in, and Toshiro here pushing forwards for her first victory over Agbeg Nanu in the World Masters. But uh, it's 6 1 at the moment. Agbeg Nanu, though, back to her very best. Now, what's going to happen? Soda Makakumi's going to happen, and that was a Wazari scored. Agbeg Nanu opens up the account there. Crowd love it. Well, first of all, it was Toshiro with the Osoto. But then Agbeg Nanu readjusts her balance and Sonomaka Komi there takes her down for the Wazari. The crowd loving this. Agbeg Nanu really taking the fight to Toshiro. She wants this victory badly, especially in front of her. Oh, and she's got it! That was great stuff from her. Wow, she does the Koshigaruma this time. And this time it's a clean hip on. 7-1 over to Shiro now. But this lady is back to her very best. World champion and now the winner in Paris. And this crowd are on their feet. Such an educated audience. They know their judo and they appreciate a great champion. Look at that. She chased it, didn't she? Koshiguruma and she just takes... Toshiro over. Toshiro didn't have a chance. Flat on her back. The referee's arm went right the way up there. That was a clear upon. What a way to win her fourth Grand Slam here in Paris. She celebrates there and she loves the crowd, doesn't she? That was a brilliant performance in front of a home crowd. The flag goes up. The national anthem is played and the crowd are celebrating with her. Thank you very much. Once again, another exhilarating Paris Grand Slam draws to a close. Join us in two weeks' time for another Grand Slam from Dusseldorf, Germany. <laughs>